All right, Slack Mr. Fans, another re-review of my previous channel. Jim Varney, Dr. Otto and the Riddle of the Gloom Beam. Let's check it out. All right, this film starts with an introduction from Ernest. Oh, hi, Vern. You know, Vern, your old buddy Ernest has really done it now. Vern, every now and then, a fella comes down the street with lollipop road all over his face. Vern, just exactly. And he's introducing this thing called the Changing Coffin. Okay. Here goes. It's really neat in here, Vern. Uh, Vern, would you mind flipping that little switch there for me? That was a nice break. But now back to the business at hand. World domination is a grueling, thankless job. That voice you heard was Dr. Otto von Schlick. Ich, ich, ich. Oh, really? This is so much fun. Very soon now, even the smallest household bed will die of slow starving. It will scramble and erase the magnetic impulses on credit cards, bank accounts, cash register. This is the result of his gloom beam. Money will be worthless. No one will escape the excruciating thing. Then, the dilemma we face is unequal in the history of Cincinnati Bank and Trust. All of the computer tapes in the accounting department have either been erased or scrambled. Checking. He's a madman. He's a madman. He obviously has no respect for anything. Human life, social values, the bottom line, nothing. There is one person who can stop this fiend, this paragon of evil. One man with the skill, ingenuity, and cunning to stop this menace to the free enterprise system. A man who has made it his life's work to stop this prophet of doom. Gentlemen, Mr. Lance Sterling, his personal secretary, Doris Tom. So these are the two people going to save the day, Lance and Doris. I'm sure that you and... Uh... I believe this is how we, Dr. Otto came to be from a baby. Did not have a good upbringing, obviously. And became scarred watching other families have wonderful family time. Yeah, he's an idiot. So that changing coffin device we saw at the beginning is something that Dr. Otto uses to transform himself into other people, which look like himself. Here he is like a Australian Outback guy. And he uses these disguises to try to track down Lance and Doris and stop them from stopping him. Here he is as a science project or something. And here's a robot at the science fair. And now Otto is a pirate. Mr. 
Anyway, there's now chaos all over the world because of the gloom beam. Dollar collapses. Pound collapses. Frank collapses. What? I've been running this through our Centauri Systems XY computer, and it seems to have come up with an interesting twist on all this. Centauri's conclusion is that this Dr. Otto von Schnick, ick, ick, is only a menace because we do not control him. The film is filled with some slapstick and some dumb jokes and... She's going to be saved. You saved me. You might remember this costume from Ernest Goes to Jail a few years later. Now, all of a sudden, I've got a Julia Child to deal with. Doctor, I... I... And now they're capturing. Later on, it chases on. They have found his lair. This is Von Schnickick's headquarters. You may be right. Three potato. Four. One. Zero. I think the good guys are going to win. Or are they? And Ernest wraps around the film, too. What's wrong, bud? Trouble under the hood? Well, the only trouble we have around here is we're out of gas. Where have you been? We ain't had any gas since the money went bad. Alright, so like Mr. Fans, let's talk about Dr. Otto and the Rule of the Gloom Beam. I'll be honest with you, I was not looking forward to watching this one again. I've seen this a couple times in my life, and I just never really cared for it. And I think one of the reasons is I just don't freaking understand what's going on in this movie. Um, this is the first movie that Jim Varney did. I believe it's the first one he did. And it was kind of, well, I don't want to say it was before he was, you know, kind of famous for his Hey Vern commercials. Because I think that he was known for that, and I don't know what the heck this kind of vehicle was. Uh, eventually he started doing the Ernest movies right after this and then obviously that was the right formula because those were quite popular. Ernest Goes to Jail, by the way, fantastic movie. That's the one to watch, but you should avoid Dr. Otto. I don't get this movie. Um, he plays an evil doctor who has a, like a hand on his head, like a third hand up here that just kind of rubs his head. Um, and, uh, he has this plan to send this beam 
over the world and the beam will like screw up all the money and the banks and everything in the world and uh, somehow that will lead to world domination or something i don't know um the banking people hire this i don't know if he's a detective or what this guy named lance and his his partner doris lance is a freaking moron doris is the only one with brains lance is obsessed with mr potato head thinks that's somehow the key the riddle to uh figuring out uh, who Dr. Otto is. Um, Dr. Otto, meanwhile, has this thing called a coffin changer, this thing that he can go into, um, which ch will change his appearance to be something else, a pirate or an old lady or a student or something different. And he tries to, you know, attack or capture and defeat uh, Lance and Doris uh, through that means rather than his Dr. Otto persona. Well, there he tries, he fails, he does manage to capture them at one point, but then they get into his lair, they press a few buttons, and they basically blow the whole thing up, and that's how our movie ends. Dr. Otto is defeated. Um, there's a wraparound at the very beginning of this movie. Apparently, they'd shown this to test audiences, and nobody understood what the hell was going on. They didn't know if it was meant for kids or adults or what, so they decided to throw uh, uh, an Ernest clip in the beginning and the end as is Ernest's character, Ernest P. Worrell. Uh, the very beginning and the very end, which was just kind of, I don't know. But they did that in there just to add some semblance of recognition. I don't know. I just don't know. But anyway, that is Dr. Otto and the Riddle of the Gloom Beam. Again, I've had this movie in my collection since the 1986 or so. I had it on a beta tape with a couple other movies. I rented it from our local video store, uh, TNR Video, which Rivers, Wisconsin, a place I ended up working at for several years during college. And um, I don't know if I actually watched it at the time, but I've seen it, like I said, a few times since then. And I just don't get it. Like I said, I don't understand what's going on. It's confusing. It's just muddled. It's just a jumbled mess. I don't really care for this movie, to be honest. That's it. Now, I don't believe this movie's been released in uh, this country. I don't think. Uh, there are, I think there's a couple PAL versions, maybe just one. I don't know. This one here I got from the UK somewhere, I think. Um, and it's, it's, I think it's very rare now. I think the last time I looked, I found one on eBay. It was like $200 or something. I did not, I think I paid about 50 bucks for this actually five years ago when I first acquired it. So, but, you know, I'm upgrading all my tapes and I needed to get this on DVD. So it's the one I had to have. So, but I'm glad I got it when I did because it ain't cheap now. So, but anyway, uh, if you're looking to upgrade from your VHS or beta tape and you need the DVD, go get it for 200 bucks. Um, but that's the only way you should get this movie. Check it out. Leave some comments. I wouldn't be surprised it's streaming somewhere, probably right here on uh, on YouTube. Um, from what I read, uh, the original film elements to this movie have disappeared, although there are some private collectors who might have a copy out there, so maybe there's a chance this could get cleaned up and released on a, a good DVD, Blu-ray. Um, but do you really want that? I don't know. Check it out. Leave some comments. Let me know what you think about Dr. Otto and the Riddle of the Gloom Beam. Watch it. Bye.